Thank you for joining me on the Investing for Freedom podcast. Today, I'm excited to have this conversation. We actually got to uh, talking quite a bit off camera, which I, I think we had to kind of finally rally it in. But this guy has so much stuff going on and he's at this interesting co crossroads in life. And I just love when I know I'm going to go into a conversation like we're going to have today because he's, at, again, just so many transitions and things coming to pass that he's just believing for. And, and as he said, manifesting for so long. And and I, as we were talking off camera, I just think of that uh, phrase and we've heard so many people say it, but, you know, Tony Robbins says it all the time that, you know, life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. And, and I feel like life is really happening uh, for Mr. Brett Harmeling and just excited to get into this conversation. So brother, thank you for being on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, happy to be here. <laughs> Dude, it's going to be fun. And, um, you know, when we jumped on I'm like, oh, so you're doing this. And you're like, no, actually we're doing this. So I'm excited to get into it. It's going to be great. Um, let's get into the four questions. If you could narrow it down to one thing that has had the greatest impact on your success, what would that be? Mm, that's a, such a good question. And uh, the thing that's had the greatest impact on my success is the people and the relationships that I've built throughout my professional life and personal life that have allowed me to kind of advance and move the ball forward in every capacity. Um, as even getting into different, you know, the Rice University was a, it's a pretty substantial thing to, to embark on. And so getting into an institution like that um, was, was transformational, but really the who, the who around that is God. I'm a big, um, big believer. And also uh, Tony Robbins, like when I went to my first Tony Robbins conference 10 years ago, he like just unleashed my mind to think a different way. And from that, I kind of stepped into this whole new way of thinking. Uh, he makes really complex psychology simple to understand. And so I live my life as a yogi in mantras. And so every day is just definitely a blessing and a gift. And when I when you meet each day with that type of energy, not a lot of bad things can happen <laughs> is what I found. I love it. Uh, it's so good when you live in that energy. Not a lot of bad things can happen. It's so good. And you know, you said something. Um, that just made me think when you were talking about Tony Robbins and 10 years ago, and he kind of unleashed your mind. It's so good because I feel like, you know, so many people that you talk to, um, there's these awakenings that we have in our life. And I don't think it ever ends, but I, anytime you're talking with, I've had this conversation multiple times, even in the last month where people are like, you know, what's the secret and what's the big thing. And I feel like you can give people like, you can give people like advice, but until it, it's like me speaking Spanish and you speaking English until they have their moment and they're completely ready. And whether this is drug addiction or whether this is, you know, depression or whether this is having your entrepreneurial awakening. Um, one of my favorite things is when I read the E-Myth because he was talking about, you know, having your entrepreneurial seizure. And I thought the way that he said it was so great. But when when you talk about that moment where your mind was unleashed, there's so many times in my life where I have that. Can you share a few of them with us other than the Tony Robbins event? Uh, times when that's happened for me? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of my stuff has, uh, unfortunately and fortunately, because I live through a lot of gratitude, has happened through like uh, having that handle or navigate through adversity. Um, one of the biggest ones was losing my uh, sister, Christy, uh, in a tragic dive boat fire. And so what that lesson really taught me is like, we all think that we have time, I'll do this when I have this money, or if I have this, you know, car or this purse or whatever it is, this thing, then I'll be able to make this happen. I feel like really flip that, right. And so I was already living like every day was my last day. Um, due to other things that have happened growing up on a farm and like just I'm like the little engine that could you know that's probably one of my greatest gifts is that I just will never quit <laughs> um and I have a lot of grit and I do whatever it takes to get the job done right and so when when I, we lost Christy it really uh, was a polarizing event that sh like the access point of my reality that just everything just went clicked and from that point on I was like you know I need to live not in grief and sadness, but actually need to live in the energy and the spirit that she left me with um, or us with, you know, she was just an absolutely amazing woman. And so that moment, and then uh, having my, you know, my son, Logan was just a pivotal moment, which allowed me to take on a new title, probably one of the most important titles I'll ever have as dad. And so from, from getting to step into that experience with my beautiful wife, Lucia, we just, we never have, you know, you can, you don't really know until it happens. And same thing, there's this just little micro shift that happens in your reality. And what happens when that, when that happens is that 
your mind works in ways that require you to uh, require a different version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's so important to continue to do the work. One of my teachers and mentors has like embedded this saying in my mind and it's, you don't, ha you don't have to practice, but when life calls upon your practice, you had better hope that you'd practiced. And so that's a good saying. So uh, I'm a yogi and like, I love practicing energy and leading people through movement. Movement is medicine. Um, and so that embodying that spirit of like, yeah, you don't have to do it, but when life, you know, requires a different version of yourself and you hadn't practiced, then that's when you find a, find yourself in trouble or at a loss for words or not knowing what to do. And so uh, those are some pivotal things that have happened that have shifted the trajectory of my life. And one was good and one was pretty, pretty hard to swallow. So, yeah, it's tough, man. Maybe yeah. you already answered this, but what was your greatest setback and what did you learn from it? Honestly, I haven't answered this yet, but the greatest setback, like I was thinking about it. I'm like, I haven't had any major setbacks like bankrupting or like losing a bunch of money or having addiction issues or anything like that. Nothing wrong or bad about those things because they're great, beautiful teachers to each individual that has had to go through those hard times. My biggest setback is uh, probably was associating myself with the wrong people, attaching myself to a brand or an image or a person who I thought was like God, you know, like almost like almost like imposed an Im image of God because they had that beautiful car that I wanted or they had this the power or the money or whatever it was, is something that I wanted. I was, I like lost my identity in these people mm. and someone that's saying, Oh, it's no big deal. Well, to someone that is like, believes in like your greatest gift on earth is that is simply you being you. <laughs> uh, that's like a very big, big thing that set me back many years now, luckily not financially, but it, it really was pretty obvious that I wasn't living Brett's life. I was living other people's lives. And that was happening. And those relationships would leave or things would happen in those relationships. They disrupt. And then I would just be like at a loss for words and, and be like, oh, I'm back to ground zero. Yeah. So now I've taken that power back. <laughs> Stop, man. I've been there a couple of times myself and uh, you know, it's, it's tough, but also when you say that you've taken that power back, like it's, it, it's being on the other side of that, that. And this is why I love the question and the conversation, you know, what it, what did you learn from it? Is that, is that taking that power back? And, and who's that new version of Brent? Uh, yeah, what I learned from it is the most profound thing that I could teach anybody, which is like your greatest gift is simply uh, you being yourself. And mm -hmm. so the closer that you can get in and the, and the more that you let go, the, the more that you let go, the more that you let in. And when you're in a, in a space of discomfort and you, get, and you actually get comfortable getting uncomfortable, you're able to like almost self-teach yourself the things, the lessons, the wounds, you know, it's transforming wounds to wisdom. Mm. And in that process, we get to go on and embark on this journey within that allows us to know things that are about ourselves and then own them. Like <laughs> just simply own what it is because that clarity is your power. It's your superpower actually. And from that place, like not a lot of people can, uh, throw you off of your true north right and so like when you stand there and you're in perfect alignment anatomical alignment and you you could just stand at the head of your thanksgiving room table and not say a word and be like okay that guy i'm not messing with that guy because your energy energy introduces you before you even speak and so if you show up with that abundant radiant energy of vitality like nothing not a lot of thing bad things can happen because you're attracting that only that energy and that energy is actually like a shield for people that are want, like you're going to get attacked more because people are like want that, but it's also act, act as a shield to push negative energy away because people uh, will be like, I'm not messing with that guy. Like he's up to something and I'm not going to get in his way. And the people that do, well, then you have your own tools. That's interesting. I, I have a million questions on just that alone. We, we might circle back to that in a few minutes. So what is the piece of advice that you find yourself sharing the most? Ooh, this one was definitely uh, like tenfold and it inter intertwines on everything. And that our greatest superpower as humans is that we have, we, we were given this gift and it might sound funny, but it's the gift of choice. And so you get to choose the energetic frequency in which you live in. And so when you take on and understand that, like I can show up to this meeting and be like hunkered down, shoulders down, kind of like lazy, kind of chill or I can have shoulders back and like these power postures and doing things to get you feeling that rich vitality flowing through your veins 
It can be very simple. It can be like getting enough sunlight every day. It can be like doing an ice bath. It can be like doing a deep, deep rinsing uh, sauna session. You know, it can be um, so many examples, but you got to find what works for you. And that's, that's the biggest thing is like, I just want people to know that even like, whether it's good or bad, everything that you feel is temporary. So just accept and embrace it full on. Good stuff, man. I like it. Who has had the greatest impact on your life? I think I touched on this already, but you know, God, uh, not in the physical form, uh, having a very deep relationship with him and prayer and meditation uh, through him. It's also given me that access point to my wife. Uh, I was kind of reintroduced to God. I took a little bit of a break through my collegiate years and thought I could do it all, you know? And uh, so I'm, gr- I'm gratefully welcomed back in my life. But then in the physical form, like truly the person who kind of set me free and unleashed that power within is Tony Robbins. I mean, he really, and he's become a friend over the years as you start to do this work and you start to, you know, the circles get closer and closer and closer. And I'd say that's the biggest thing that um, groups like Tony Robbins and Abundance and like these networks that I'm a part of that have really helped advance me and take my life and my family's life to the next level. Because I feel like if I need something, I have a lot of people and a lot of resources to go to. uh, And I also have a lot of resources to give to. And so there's a really powerful place to be in where you have both. It's not you're not taking, you're not giving, you're like doing a little bit of both. And it's a very healthy, symbiotic relationship. Dig it. Okay, I'm going to circle back to the energy thing because I think it's really important. And let's do it. <laughs> I have a, like just a tactical question because, you know, people might be listening and, um, you know, as you're talking, like one of my favorite books, I've read it multiple times, is uh, The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. I think it's just such a great book. And then you, you know, you read Untethered Soul, which I read Untethered Soul first and I got like a quarter of the way through it and I had to set it down. I, have you read those books? I actually have. And those are, those are some good places to start, right? <laughs> yeah. So like untethered soul for me was kind of like, whoa, what the heck is this? And it almost like shocked me. And so I put it down and then I read a surrender experiment. I don't know, a year or two later. And then once I read surrender experiment, I kind of circled back to untethered soul. So when I hear you, you know, talking about energy, I get it and I believe it. And, and I'm all for it, but what are some of the things that you do or advise people to do? Cause I hear you say, you know, shoulders back and, and stand at the head of the table and that's all fine and great. And again, I get it. And if anybody's listening and they're like, you're nuts, if they would just stop and take some inventory, you would know who these people are already. Cause you recognize it. Even if you're not consciously thinking it, we are energy and we feel that and we see that. And so what are some of the what are some of the practical things that you do or that you would advise other people to do to change your energy state? Yeah, so <clears throat> that energetic state is called physiology. And so to shift your physiology, there's really only two ways to do it. It's to physically move, to get your cells in motion because emotion, the word emotion, right? means simply means energy in motion. And so when you put your body into motion, you move, you actually trigger a response from your, from your parasympathetic system that puts your body into a different state, like literally. So that's one way, simple simple movement. I'm, ta- I'm not talking go to the gym and do a 45 minute. I'm talking just even getting out inside and walking, right? So that's number one. And then two is just the mindset thing, which is gratitude. If you think about any time that you've ever been down in your life, or if you ever even start to go there, if you shift your perspective into a lens of gratitude, like instead of, like you said, this is happening for me, not to me, like, literally it's impossible to be in a negative energetic state, right? And so I think that one of the biggest problems and issues with uh, humankind in today's reality is we're actually disconnected from the earth. And I say that because how many times, you know, today or this week, have you actually put your bare feet on mother earth? And most people are like, oh yeah, I do that. Like, uh, (laughs) whatever. I'm like, you should be spending most of your time doing that. The earth holds a very specific energetic charge. And when we become detached from the earth, we actually lose that charge. Um, And so it's a very significant thing to do. Another thing is just getting outside. Being inside is 70% more toxic than being outside. Our rooms are filled with all sorts of chemicals, pains, synthetic things that you just don't even think about until you just hear it one time. You're like, you're right. (laughs) <laughs> it's so true. I was on a call actually this morning. I'm in a group called Wellspring and 
just an amazing organization. And the lady that was speaking was, she was talking about the mental health crisis and how, you know, we are not meant to be alone. And Pastor Daniel Grothy was talking about this, I don't know, a month or two ago too. And he said that the first problem that was ever addressed in the Bible was loneliness. I want to tie this back into what you're saying with energy and being outside or the other side of it being inside. This lady today was talking about the same thing, like loneliness and depression and the mental health crisis that we have going on in America. And then she was talking about how literally, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to go off the rails here, but you know, just what happened in 2020 with COVID really yeah. accelerated a lot of, you know, issues and, and problems. And, you know, there's so many people nowadays that are experiencing anxiety and, and mental health problems and, and we're all susceptible to it, but really I think isolation has become a big part of this. And you're talking about being trapped inside and it's not just kids. There's so many people that are talking about this generation and how they don't go outside and they don't leave their room. Well, it's, I mean, even from a work perspective, we don't work outside and that's a generalized comment, but you know, we work in offices and we, like you said, we're just not spending time outside. I sat out in the sun this morning for like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes after I got back from the gym. And it's just such an amazing like empowering, enlightening thing. But I want to talk about just one of your things that you're super passionate about, which kind of branches into a bunch of different things. But when we're talking about this mental health crisis and all the problems that are going on, nobody's immune to this, number one. And it's not just a, you know, a, a veteran problem. It's not just a, you know, Hispanic American problem. It's not just a certain group problem. This is something that almost everybody, if they stopped and took inventory, is experiencing this on some level. And I think you have the answers to it just in some of the things that you've said already. And, you know, we had a, we had a tragedy in, in the family earlier this year where, you know, somebody took their life and, and it was just a really, really, really challenging time. And, and on the other side of it, you mentioned this, like with your sister on the other side of it, you know, our family has come through it stronger with some desires to really help on the other side of these things. So learning the lesson is one thing going through it. You have to go through it. But the other side of it is where it gets, um, you know, just intriguing. What do you do with it? So I want to talk about, and I'll just turn it over to you. Tell us about all the amazing things that you have going on, these passion projects that you're working on. And you literally said to me, I think it was off camera, that 10 years of manifestation, you're standing there right now. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks, Mike. Uh, so it has been a journey. I must say that. So in 2012, it was very unpopular to be a yoga dude in the finance industry uh, in Houston, Texas, of, of, of all places in the world, you know, the, the, the place where oil and gas has, you know, built this city, which now is a medical based medical and tech hub of the country as well. Uh, but so I say, I say that because it's kind of funny, but looking back, it was very uncommon and unpopular. And so I just knew, and the reason that I got into this journey was actually a result of a traumatic brain injury I had. And then also seeing my sister really step into her power as a, as a woman uh, in simply practicing yoga and movement and meditation. Meditation, by the way, for all those people like, oh, it's like woo-woo or scary. Just meditation just simply means to become familiar with. Mm -hmm. So when you meditate, whether it's for 30 seconds or 30 minutes or two hours, whatever it is, it's just simply you're just taking some time to just become more familiar with you and your surroundings so you can reset and, and make good decisions. Nothing wrong with that, right? Um, and so anyway, as I navigated through the finance uh, industry, uh, built a very nice book of business, um, transitioned it to uh, a wealth advisory firm here in Houston. The uh, reason being is I wanted freedom and I didn't see it as a freedom play. I looked at it as a responsibility play. I started getting considerable assets under management. I'm like, I took on a lot of responsibility for these, for these people in their retirement. I, I'm like, I don't have an issue with that. I just, I want freedom in my future. And so I was like, okay, actually I need to hit pause on this. I love you guys. I'm going to go a different direction. Ended up going back into technology, did some work in the agency for about a year and a half doing human trafficking uh, work. And so that was a very eye-opening experience, kind of behind the scenes, fighting the good fight, making the invisible visible, all those kind of things. And so that really, uh, that really was a unique opportunity. But then I was like, I want to have a family. And so then I navigated into real estate, private equity, got my MBA from Rice University, all, all kind of mashed together while taking a company, uh, ESG company, public. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of things happen in a short period of time. And then this whole time, I'm still teaching yoga. I still take on uh, private clients. I'm doing event-based yoga, 
you know, taught in a lot of a lot of unique places and different countries to hundreds of thousands of people. So I've had the blessing and the honor to do that and lead people. You know, it's like Tony Robbins. I gave people their power back. I'm like, if you show up, I'm here not here to fix you. I'm just here to remind you that like what you have and what you're working with is perfect, just the way you are. And so leading that journey, I uh, met a guy by the name of Steve Jimenez um, at Rice University, who is the founder of Hives for Heroes. And what they do is they have built the largest network of beekeepers in the entire country, maybe world at this point. And so what they do is they pair mentors who are veteran, bee, like actual beekeepers with a veteran. And if, for those of you that have never had a beekeeping experience, when you stand atop a box of bees, 50,000 bees, and you feel their energy, life gets pretty real pretty quick. And so that experience can really um, provide a lot of uh, therapeutic healing. The smell, the energy, the experience, you know, you're putting on uniforms, you're buttoning up, you got, you got to work as a team, slow as fast, fast, or uh, slow as fast, fast as smooth. And so um, you got to be diligent when working with them. Anyway, long, all that to say, in the background, managing my own traumatic brain injury, I've been really curious about science and technology and how we could advance the human potential and live more optimally. Because like, there's so many ways to do it. I'm like, I don't have all this time. <laughs> and so I met this guy, Dave Asprey, whom a lot of people know these days, way before he was popular. <laughs> uh, way before he was popular. And what I loved about him is he was just, he wasn't saying things were ever right or wrong. He's saying, if you're telling me to do that, I want to know why. So he always challenged the status quo. And that is like who I am. I always challenge the status quo. I want to know why. I like to break rules. And I'm not saying I won't, I won't live by the rules, but I'm like, okay, why is that a rule? And can we do it better? And so I'm currently standing in our first center in Houston, Texas, and it's called Happy Life Labs. Um, this is a result of me serving on the board of advisors for Hives for Heroes uh, and understanding that we needed to start to create a center, a biohacking center where veterans could come to heal themselves from a cellular level. That looks like things like saunas, ice baths, acupuncture, IVs, pulse electromagnetic field therapy getting outside and working with the bees in our hives in the backyard, and then simply being in an environment that's uh, psychologically safe. Something that's very important uh, that I would, that I like to teach people is like in environments where there's no psychological safety, it's really hard for any human to embody the spirit of creativity or passion or like taking risks or courage when you, always, when you feel like there's like, you got to be kind of dance. And I know that everyone listening to this knows what this feeling is like when you have that boss, you're like, you don't want to tell them that you need to leave 20 minutes early to go to yoga, to take care of yourself so that you can be a better employee. Cause you're afraid of what it'll say. We want to, we want to create the world where like that is possible where you can manifest your dreams in real time and give people power, their power back by getting them reconnected to nature. Right. And so everything here is nature driven. Um, we will be, I think, one of the first apotherapy uh, locations in the country, which is where you breathe the byproducts of bees from their hive directly into your system. It's supposed to be treme uh, tremendous uh, therapeutic benefits to that. Um, I won't make any medical claims here because I'm not a doctor, but healing like all sorts of, all types of different AI, um, autoimmune uh, diseases and things like that. So that's what we have going on. It's a center and it's a, it's also going to be a modular event space where, you know, teams like yours, Mike, could come into town for a multiple day thing. Um, we have an Airbnb on the property as well. And so if we have, as we have energy practitioners or people that are coming in to lead workshops, they can stay here as well. So it's like an all encompassing thing, uh, but it's here to serve and give back to the, to the, to our, you know, to our nation's heroes that are a result, a reason and a result of us being able to even have these cool and fun dynamic conversations. I, I have a question. Well, actually I have two questions. So are you guys like, how, like if, if I knew somebody that was a veteran and needed help, is there like an organization they go to, to, to get your services or, or what yeah. does that look like? Yeah. Sorry, I just went right for the, cause yeah, no, it's good. Big so, it's such a big deal. so our website is very well built out. The hives for heroes one that is happy life labs. will take a little bit of time. It's uh and it, by the way, this is, it's not going to be a place where you can just show up and like, it's a private social wellness club, right? And so it's by appointment only, it's word of mouth. We're not trying to, this isn't something that we're doing to make a bunch of money or profits from. It's something that we're doing to truly give back. Now, obviously revenue and profits will, 
are yielded when you do, when you, I believe currency follows value, right? And so we're creating value in the world. And so I'm, I have some expectations that currency will follow. But that's not the whole, that's not the point. The point is, is to give back in a, in a way that really ma matters. And so if you go to hivesforheroes.com, there's a link on there and you can sign up to be a, uh, a newbie, <laughs> like B-E-E, -E. <laughs> and you will get paired with someone wherever you are in the country. We now have a network of uh, 2,700 <laughs> veterans in our system. And so we know that it works. Uh, Steve is, you know, one, I can't even tell you how many awards for just simply doing what he's done. And by the way, he's also a fully disabled combat Marine veteran. And so I love working with people like him because he's a process and results and purpose-driven professional who like is here as a result. He's still here on earth because of his, of having the opportunity to be with bees. Mm -hmm. And so I'm super grateful to, to be on that path and that journey with him together. It's exciting. And I want to circle back to, if you don't mind, you said you had a traumatic brain injury. And the reason why like, I'm camping on this because number one, it's impacted me, uh, like I said, recently, um, you know, with the death in the family and the suicide, but it's impacting so many people. And military for obvious reasons, but it's not just military, you know? And so I'm curious, again, if you're open to talking about it, of course, uh, you had a tra traumatic injury. And I mean, obviously we see you here today and all the work you've done. And, you know, I've known a portion of your story. I think the first time we met, I think it was actually in person. You, you know, you talked about Christy, your sister, and, and I had, my, my parents are divers, um, you know, and they're, I mean, they're, they're, they do three or four trips on live aboards and all this. So you and I connected um, but I didn't know about all of this. And when I see somebody that's, I'm going to say as evolved as you, you know, I would have, I would not have known. And I think there's just some hope in it. Obviously, you know, the lab that you're building out and the bees, but I'm curious about your story and how you got to where you're at, because I think people need to hear more stories like Steve's and yours where, you know, there is a way to overcome. There is a way to get through it. Yeah. And that's, 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 I touched on that a bit earlier. That is like understanding the energetic principle that all energy will change no matter what, or like a feeling. So like, let's say like, that's what I love about uh, ice baths and cold therapy, right? Yeah. Like it's just cold water. Like you're not going to die from it. So if you just think about it like that, you're like, thank you, God, for allowing me to feel this cold water on my skin. <laughs> I know it's kind of morbid to think about, but like, when you like think about it like that versus like, Oh my God. I'm cool. And you jump out, like you had this huge reaction to it. It's like, what is that saying about the way that you're setting up your energetic system of your body, which is your physiology, right? Life moves to support whatever supports more of life. Yeah. And so if you're not feeling energetically charged or alive over here, if you're not moving or if you're not shifting to that gratitude lens, like you're going to be stuck. And that's where things like depression and anxiety you start getting on these medications, you know, that that really are, they, they alter the mood of your body. Now, so, I'm not saying all medications are bad, but if you are <clears throat> prescribed a medication, you should definitely ask all the questions and do all the research because it's your body. I believe that God made us perfectly. Yeah, we're obviously, we have our flaws and we're broken and imperfect, but that's, that's the challenges that we get to live through and live with. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you want, like the reason I am where I am today, like I said, I'm a little engine that could, you know, new goals require new habits. And so thankfully I've never had a problem with addiction, but you know, there's times in my life where I drink too much, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe just shift away from that to like not doing it. And then seeing how my life evolves with like, like that, or, Hey, like there's all these different modalities out there, natural remedies for brain functioning and nootropics and ways to, you know, neurogenesis can happen, which is new, new growth in the brain. So all these things are becoming readily available. And, and Mike, what's important to understand is like, why are people talking about this right now? It's because there's tools in which we can measure the way that these, that our bodies interact and engage with these things. Yeah. So there's tons of different products and technologies that actually can show you that your brain is growing or that your brain is working in a different way or that you slept, you slept better. And so you should feel restored. So maybe you should push that workout today. Or there's, you know, so what you measure, you can manage. And so that's why it's important to, to measure some things. It's interesting too, as we're talking about this, because we bought so into a system. And again, I'm not saying that, you know, there isn't people that need medicine and, and traditional, right. you know, Western medicine, 
But what I am saying is we've bought into this system that says X, this is the way it has to be. And then we're skeptical of these other things. Do you know who Gary Brecka is, Dr. Brecka? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so I was on a call with him last week. I'm actually um, going to Cabo in a few days with, with him and a few other people. I'm really excited to, we're just gonna share a little awesome. house. I get to hang out with him. But you know, he made a comment the other night as we were listening, he was talking about cold plunges. And I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but I, I have kind of a, I got a cold plunge in the sauna and everything in my backyard. And as he was talking about this, I know, I know the benefits of cold plunge. And I know that when I get in the cold plunge, it makes me feel better. Like I get this, I, I'm energized for like half a day when I do cold plunge, right? Yeah. So when you're talking about feedback, measuring it is important. But Dr. Brecka said something from a science perspective, because there's, again, we believe medicine that's been taught to us a certain way. You know, if you've got doctor in front of your name, then just tell me what to do. And I'm going to blindly do whatever you tell me. And I remember just as a side note, our son, when he was born, had some issues. And I remember even at, uh, they, they thought they were going to have to do surgery when he was born, but then they delayed it till he was two months old. And I remember even when we went back in seeing the surgeon and the specialists, I was like, there has to be a different way. I was questioning them, right? Cause they're getting ready to cut my, they said it could be up to a 16 hour surgery on my little two month old little guy, you know? And so I'm questioning everything. But anyway, from a science perspective, I think we're just programmed to just trust and not verify. But then it's interesting to me, whenever somebody starts talking about cold plunge, a natural therapy, whatever, we question it the opposite way. You're like, you're a freaking weirdo. Like, why, why would that do anything? And Dr. Brecka said something. He said our liver is full of a protein that when you fall into a cold lake, it releases in your body so that you have strength that when you get out of the cold water, you have this strength to save your life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, there's the science like there, but, but every, you know, just because it's cold, even though I feel better, like people just think that a lot of this stuff is goofy, but no. the reality of it is what's goofy is that we've been taught a certain way. And when you look at, again, I don't want to go off the rails here, but <laughs> when we look at like donors and the system that we've been bought into and taught and brainwashed by, but then somebody says meditate or somebody says do a cold plunge or somebody says, you know, take NAD supplements or whatever. And we just like our brain just tilts, right? It's weird. Yeah. Which is why like, there's a lot of cool things that, and I'm, I'm one of the, I'm, I'm one that's willing to try just about anything once. <laughs> But like really the premises of healing and the reason that I'm like, I think when I feel, then I can heal. If I'm not feeling and I'm numb and I'm just like unconscious, like then like I don't actually get to heal. When I say heal, I mean like actually healing and then like mentally healing. Uh, so there's like the physical and then like the non-physical part that happens. And so I always tell people, I'm like, you can quit or keep going and they're both going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is, is it's temporary. And so make a choice, make a decision, just choose. Going back to your journey, when you said heal physically and then heal mentally, was that part of your journey? Did you, I, I don't know what happened to you. Yeah. I just felt, I, I fell backwards, cracked my skull open, lost some blood, level four TBI, uh, hockey, playing hockey. And uh, yeah, when you have a traumatic brain injury, like kind of like you almost feel like you're cut off here, right? And so like the chakra system and the energetic system of the body can really just, you can live up here. And that's obviously when things go 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 wrong, right? Because when you feel vitality and you feel in your body and you feel connected to the earth and you feel the sun and you feel hot and cold, you lose someone that's close to you. Then you're like, damn, I'm just glad I'm alive today. Mm -hmm. Like anything could happen. Like all the money stuff goes away, all the relationships, like just... Just take a moment to breathe. It does, it does, like you're one breath away from changing your life. You have to be willing to go there. And so we live in this hyper-connected reality, Mike, where we are so connected that we're actually disconnected. And so like there's definitely a loneliness epidemic that's happening. You know, it's forced people to go inside, to live in, inside when we're literally born to live outside. Like, do you think God said, okay, Mike, I'm going to bring you into the world. I want you to cover your reproductive parts for your whole life. Nope. Every day, all the time, no exposure. That's why do you think we have problems with, with that part of our body? We're literally not allowing light to heal. We're, we're blocking it from the, from the world. And that's a, I can go down a whole rabbit hole on that, but we are light beings, you know, which is why like I have bl blue light blockers, even in my contact lenses on my screens. I do red light therapy with, you know, sauna space, the best 
most natural form of red light in the world, no EMFs, but we're absorbing energy, whether it's good or bad, we don't get to choose. Yeah. What we get to choose is the environment we go in. And yeah, right now I'm inside, for instance, uh, but most of the time I'm outside on phone calls. I just do the walk and I, I don't apologize to anybody because I'm like, you should be outside too. And I don't try to, sh I never try to shit on people, Mike, but I'm like, <laughs> come on, like, <laughs> I promise you, if we have this call and you're walking, it's going to go better, yeah. especially for men. Men walking is something that's very primal instinct where their minds actually, it's like been proven that their mind actually works in a different way. If I'm sitting at, at home and I'm across the table with my wife and we're having the same conversation that we are walking, the walking conversation will go a hundred times better. Wow. I agree with that. Karen and I do this a lot on our, almost every couples event that we have, we go on a walk with the couples and sometimes we'll put them paired up with their partner. And sometimes we break them up with guys and girls. And so you, you basically are paired with somebody. And we usually do this early on. You're paired with someone and you go on a 30, like we'll go on a 30 to 45 minute walk and halfway one person is talking and the other person does nothing but listen. You can't respond. You can't give answers. And it's been one of the most like powerful exercises just because to your point, very seldom do we connect on that level and then take it a step further. When, when you're on a walk with somebody and you just learn to listen for 30 minutes straight or 15 or 20 minutes straight, it, it introduces a whole different level. And so I agree with you when it comes to walking, slowing down, being outside, um, curious, and you kind of waxed over this. You just kind of ran through it because a lot of people, maybe if people are not like watching the video and you're listening to this on audio, people might be picturing you like in a, you know, like a yogi outfit. And you, <laughs> you talked about a master's degree. You worked in finance. You came out of corporate America. Like you're a successful guy too. So I just, just for the listeners, cause I think I don't want to split the audience, but some people might be thinking, you know, Mike, who's, who's this guy you brought in? Cause this is investing for freedom. And what I love about you and this conversation is that I think freedom starts right here, whether it's just even forget about, you know, meditation, cold plunge, sauna, all that stuff for a second, freedom starts right here. And that's really what you've been talking about this whole time is finding your, you know, center and that freedom and the energy and everything. And all those other things are just tools to get you more in touch with yourself. I work with a, um, a coach, his name's Dr. John, and I've been working with him for two years and, and I just love this guy. But if there's anything that he's taught me, it's connecting back to me, which is everything I hear you saying. Yes. And so that's where a lot of the things that have, the companies that have helped build and scale, <clears throat> probably most well-known for you know helping SMEs, small, medium-sized enterprises grow, scale, and sell. And so as a result of... Uh, working for many really cool and dynamic organizations. Um, I had, you know, built a lot of skills professionally in how to work inside of boardrooms in corporate environments with professionals, raising capital. Um, you know, when I was in the agency, um, talk about uh, intensity and seriousness in, in a very uh, sacred way. Um, and also just being with people, right? Being with people that don't really have the tools to have a heart or, or it's not appropriate to have the heart space open. So just being with people in a way that allows for the same type of energy to exist without forcing it. Very mm -hmm. delicate, very delicate uh, skill to, to learn. But my undergrad, uh, <clears throat> my undergrad education is in education and behavioral psychology. Didn't even know that I was going to ever be in selling or entrepreneurship or all these. I, my first year out of college, I taught fourth grade, fourth grade and eighth grade lab science, science in a title one school district, which, you know, kids come to gun school with guns every day, alcohol, weed, like you name it. And you're like, oh my God, 36 grand. Like <laughs> this is the, I can't even do it. And so uh, I shifted quickly out of that. And that's where I'm, you know, moved to Chicago. I spent about five, five years there building up um, some significant wealth, um, in real estate and technology. And that opened the door to moving me to Houston, Texas, uh, because I was a keynote technology speaker and I was helping, uh, bring new age technology products to residential real estate markets. Yeah. I've got like a vet people are like, you know, say I'm a Renaissance type of man. Cause I'm like interested and good at a lot of things. And like, I'm okay with it. Cause like I am, I'm like passionately curious. I'm like, I get into new things all the time. It drives my wife insane, but I'm like, oh yeah, babe, by the way, 
I'm about, we're getting a Traeger. Well, she actually got me a Traeger for my birthday. <laughs> I'm going to start smoking meats <laughs> and now I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> like simple stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the same. And, um, Kara gets frustrated with me too. Cause not, I shouldn't say frustrated. That's the wrong word. They, she actually laughs at me because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good at a lot of things. I'm not really great at very many things, but I like to test a lot of different things. There's a few things that I'm really good at, but yeah. So tell me, what are you most excited about? Well, I love being a dad. I just went through a pretty tough transition uh, with a multi-billion dollar uh, real estate firm that I was really, uh, really loved uh, being a part of. And so I transitioned out of that. It wasn't my decision um, and so, but what that did is it reset me back into, uh, being home more, which I'll tell you what, having a 13 month old, uh, is just incredible just to, to, to see him and it really shifted my whole mission. Like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I taking time to be on this podcast? Why am I doing anything? It's like, I want to be my son's hero. Like mm-hmm. I want him to grow up someday and be like, my dad is an amazing man. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I want him to be like me or or push my, you know, push my agenda on him. But like, I know that if I show up the way that I do and continue to and help people just get reconnected to their power, I know I've said that a lot of times, but it's so important because with investing for freedom, right, Mike, like I'm one of the guys that like, I don't invest in anything that I don't understand or that I believe in. Like I fundamentally actually have to understand and believe in it, or I won't do it. Even if, even if you're like, damn, I could have made a million dollars on that. I don't actually, I don't care. Like it doesn't bother me that I missed out on certain trends or, you know, stock picks or businesses because I'm like, you know, like it's okay. And so I just look at those, those distractions as, as lies, which I, which I, I'm an acronym guy, limited ideas entertained. And so I like look into those lies that the market and people tell you. And I'm like, I just get entertained by how distracting those things are from from pulling people from like what they know how to do. Cause like the best investment that you can make in make is in yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't actually believe that or understand that, try it, (laughs) try it, do something that like radically different for yourself. And there's no, even if it's really expensive and you can't afford it, that'll probably make the biggest impact of your life outside of anything else. Yeah. You know, I actually, I agree with that a hundred percent. And when I look at, you know, the investments that we've made in ourselves and our education and, you know, masterminds and groups like GoBundance and our health. And like I said, you know, we have a cold plunge and all of, I heard a girl say this the other day on Instagram, she made a comment and this is somebody that I know pretty well and actually, you know, really appreciate her thought process. But she said, whenever somebody says, you know, the best investment you can make in yourself, it's because they want to sell you something. And I was just like, Mm. I was literally floored for a minute because I actually believe that the best investment you can ever make in yourself is, or the best investment you can make is in yourself, like you just said. And I was kind of set back by that. And so I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that, um, especially for a guy that, you know, has done so many things and had so many successful investments and is, is moving on to the things that you're doing. Um, that's really, that's really cool to hear because at the base of everything you're working on now is really that centered um, thought process and, and not only investing in yourself, but helping others do that. And when you hear somebody say something like that, where, you know, well, Brent's just saying the best investment you can make in yourself is because he wants to sell. It's so not true. I've never, I mean, until actually today, I didn't even fully know what you're doing because you just want to show up and help people, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big, like born to serve kind of guy. But I also coach people that, you know, are in this stuck in this yogic state of being because like, and this, this is a good lesson that my business coach gave me. He's like, you know, you can be a, in this space, but like just say a yogi is like who you are. It's like, and yeah, you do it, but it's not like what you do, right? Because who you are is so much more important than what you do. <laughs> and so people can like you because you're just like, kind of a peculiar dude <laughs> out here doing all these things, you know, leading, leading like an epic life, you know, like through everything that I do, that's just like, that is the good, the good that you're able to see is just simply a reflection of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you can't even possibly feel or see something unless you actually, or you can't possibly see something unless you feel it yourself. It's impossible, literally impossible. And our bodies are, are innately intelligent. 
My wife, Lucia, wrote a book called Intuitively Full, Trust Your Body, Change Your Life. Mm. And so the book talks about how our bodies are innately intelligent. And if we listen to the, to the sensations and the things that are occurring in our body, the, 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 especially around food, right? Then, and if we listen to what those feelings are and we eat based on those feelings with a little bit of understanding of things, things that are essential, right? Mm -hmm. Then like, it's impossible to, to, to like be unhealthy and from a nutrition standpoint. And so our bodies are innately intelligent and therefore we cannot ever lie to ourselves. <laughs> and you know, when you do, you know, when you make a bad, a bad decision on a hire, a fire, uh, an investment, a choice at a restaurant, like you just, you almost immediately know. And typically when you've made that decision and it hasn't felt right in your gut, you know, right. Right. Uh, that's a very primal response of saying like, you're probably not making a good, good choice. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Well, one last question and then I'll, uh, let you go here. Cause I want to be right. with your time. If our audience is listening and they're like, I'm really intrigued by what Brent's talking about here. What's the place that you would recommend they get started on their journey to finding that, I guess, energy state, whatever it is that, that yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would, uh, recommend connecting with myself, um, on Instagram. It's just at Brett Harmeling. Uh, that's not a promotion for myself, but I have collectively taken a lot of resources. And so happy life labs is like a collab, right? It should actually be called collabs, but it's not because we can't because of, uh, the, not, the donation side of it. So Mike, if you come, for instance, to, to our center, you pay $100 for a service. That $100 is actually going to a nonprofit organization. And so it's a tax write-off on your end. And then it's and then part of a portion of, of your service goes to a veteran being able to uh, go through the same uh, type of therapy that you did. So it's, it's, it's just that circular effect, right? It's the flywheel effect. And so we're giving back in real time. But the reason I say that is because I, you could go do your own research and try to find the best companies that are, you know, a force for good and only doing the right things. But people like myself that have dedicated their entire life to figuring that stuff out, staying way up way too late at night, spending a lot of money <laughs> on trying things that don't work and like going to all these biohacking conferences and sponsoring people and getting sponsored and all the things like I feel like I've really distilled it down to a way that's that makes it accessible for people to heal. So just if you ping me on uh, Instagram and you tell me that you listen to this podcast and be more an open book for free, just to share what I know and be a, a you know a force of force of knowledge for you, so you can make good decisions on what sauna to get or what ice bath or <laughs> things, simple things like that. Start simple is my is my advice. I love it, man, and uh, I'm. I'm going to take you up at some point in time on standing over that beehive. I want to experience that. That'd be cool. We'd love to have you, Mike. And we have hives in Austin as well. So anywhere, any city that you're in, if you want to get plugged into that network, it's just hives for heroes. Uh, we're building out happy life labs at the moment, but hives for heroes, you can really plug in anywhere in the country and we'll get you paired up for an experience. And, uh, but we're, we're here in Houston, uh, Steve and myself. And so, uh, if you want to travel in, just let us know. We're very, very open to this network and this community. So awesome, brother. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. I've, um, you know, been intrigued uh, by your journey over the last couple of years and I'm just excited to do it. So, and man, the work that you're doing again, just, you know, from, from a personal perspective, I, I know, I know our family, we were just talking about, you know, getting involved in some nonprofit stuff just for, you know, mental health and, and TBI specifically, and, and some of that. And it's actually caused us to want to start a foundation where each one of our kids get to pick what they want to give to. Um, and, you know, whether directly or indirectly, you're making an Im big impact on, um, you know, a lot of that stuff too. So I don't know, I'll connect with you too, because we might even want to team up in, in some areas. So. Excellent. Yeah. The one thing that I'll leave anybody that listened to this with today from my perspective is life is too short to not take a risk for happiness. Good stuff. Thanks brother. Right. So.